as I talked about the uh, acute phase response proteins or, or acute phase proteins, I think is what I called them. But anyways, inflammatory cytokines are involved in raising the body temperature, um, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are all going to activate the liver to make the acute phase response proteins, right? So at the liver we have C-reactive protein, mannose binding lectin, MBL, which leads to an activation of complement and ultimately opsonizations. We also have, whenever these reach the bone marrow endothelium, a lot of activation of neutrophils, getting them to the site of the infection. On both the hypothalamus, the fat, and then the muscles, we have increased metabolism, which leads to increased body temperature, which can actually cause a fever, which leads to decreased viral and bacterial replication. Most pathogenic microorganisms and, and viruses, to some extent as well, um, have a specific uh, temperature that they liked, that they prefer to grow in, where they have an optimal growth at. And usually when you raise the internal temperature of your body, that's going to make it an inhospitable environment for them. But also think about the fact that we have an increased production of uh, just met increased metabolism, we have an increased activation of other things going on there. So it's not just uh, to, to deal with the, the pathogen itself, it's to help kind of the body heal itself in, to a large extent. Um, okay, so let's diagram or do an outline of the acute phase proteins. And I'm going to do this in reverse color order because I'm just so tired of seeing the same colors in the same sections. So the first one that I'm going to mention is the C-reactive protein. And you may have seen this earlier when we talked about all the different pathways of complement activation. Um, this is a penetraxin which remember we said that those acted like bridging molecules, but in this context I just want to think about it as an opsonin. C-reactive protein has a really rapid increase in concentration um, in the in the bloodstream. As it's, it's why we call it an acute phase because it goes up. The increased concentration goes up a lot whenever we have infection in in, in the body. Um, the other thing that I think that's really important that you need to know. You don't really need to know this that it's an opsonin. You don't really need to know that it goes up a lot when we have an acute infection. What if you don't walk away knowing this? You may be in trouble. Is that this is involved in the classical pathway? for complement activation. That is absolutely paramount that you know that. That's why it's called the C, C, classical. <clears throat> the next protein is um, gold. You know, it's serum amyloid A protein. So there's lots of things that you could say about this. Um, what I'm just going to say is that it's involved in the binding. It binds to, hopefully you can see that, it acts as a TLRs, toll-like receptors scavenger receptors, so I'm just going to say SR, scavenger receptors, and then other cells, and along with this, I like to think that the A, and the A means, you can think of it as acute, or I like to think of it that it's going to activate things, it's going to activate the production of cytokines. Activates this activates the release of cytokines. Cool. Which, in case you didn't know this already, in this context, cytokines are known to cause the telltale signs of inflammation. Hopefully, oof, that is just... I feel like as, as the day gets older, my handwriting gets worse. So the next one, I'll do it in magenta, and this is kind of a very huge category here, is the, the mannose binding lectin or MBL for short. The most important thing, the number one thing that I think you need to know about this is that this is what's involved in the, the lectin pathway for complement activation. This also acts as an opsonin. This is in a larger family of molecules known as collectins. So it ends in ion, you know that it's a protein. Um, and what this is, this is just part mixture of collagen combined with lectin. So I feel like that's a really clever uh, name, collectins, collagen and lectin, so I thought that, that was uh, interesting to say the least. Um, these are also, the, when I say that the mannose binding lectin, what it's binding to, or, or the, the receptor sites, remember that it's, so it's such a broad category, so this includes pretty much all microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, protesia, and even parts of viruses. 
that are involved in, in, in the binding of mannose binding lectin. This is such a huge category of things that we have here. Um, <clears throat> the last thing that I really wanted to mention about this, though, and I'll see if I can fit this in here, is the mannose binding lectin contains to it is a serine protease zymogens. It's not really so much important that you know that it's a serine protease. This isn't cell biology or biochemistry, but you need to know that it is a zymogen. What is the zymogen? Well, zymogen is just means that it's the inactive form of of the, of the serine protease in this context. And there's two ones that you need to know, and we'll talk about those later when we talk about the individual pathways. But um, they're known as MASP1 and MASP2. So we have MASP1 and we have MASP2. And we'll talk about this more when we get into depth on the details of the uh, lectin pathway and the classical pathway. But know that MASP1 is the one that's going to He's going to undergo proteo, uh, autoproteolysis. He's going to cleaves himself, which makes him free of this complex here, and, and this will make sense later on. And then MAS2 also will cleave himself. But once MAS2 is active the active form, um, it's going to be uh, adequately cleaving C4 and C2, complement protein 4 and complement protein 2. We'll talk about that later. I was just throwing this out there so you know that. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to mention that we have on the acute phase proteins is <clears throat> the proteins of the clotting cascade. And this isn't, I don't think it's important that you know them so much as you know that we are forming a, a blood clot, and this is a long, complicated process here. So things like uh, um, tissue plasminogen factor, uh, thrombin uh, plasminogen which will be converted into plasmin, fibrin, ogen, all of this stuff that results in the formation of a clot. And if I have room, I'm going to see if I can fit it in here. But this all takes place, These all this, I should always clarify that this is in the hepatocytes. That's where we have these acute phase proteins being uh, secreted, and it makes sense that we would have them there. Um, I'll see if I can fit this in green, gold, not gold. Um, complement components. I don't really have room to go into details on this, but uh, really just C3, C4, uh, C9, and then factor B. So I'm just going to say that like three times. Under complement components, C3, C4, C9, and then factor B. Those are the most important ones you need to understand because that's what we have in such a high amount of concentration. So that's it for the acute phase proteins. Now, the next thing we'll talk about will be the actual uh, roles that they play in context, not just abstract.